go live. Uh, we're having a little problem. Well, we're live on LinkedIn. I'm trying to get to go live on Facebook, but it's not it's not working. So hello, hello. Welcome to the All In Podcast with Nate Pale. Of course, I am your host, Nate Pale. My guest today is Agnes Billick with Raw and Real Media. Agnes is the founder of Raw and Real Media, an agency that is helping entrepreneurs and coaches to grow their brand, trust, and revenue through podcast interviews. Welcome to the show, Agnes. How are you doing? Thanks so much, Nate. I'm super excited to dive into the topic with you today. Yeah, me too. I'm super excited as well. And I apologize to everybody if you were just tuning in. I set up my uh, settings incorrectly, so my Facebook stream didn't go live, but that's all right. We're, we're live on, on LinkedIn, and um, we'll get it recorded and pushed out there. So super excited to find out a little bit more about you because we've chatted in the past um you're into podcasting i'm into podcasting we both believe that the podcasting is an underutilized tool for creating networks for building relationships with people and really growing your business so let's start there like tell tell me a little bit about your self-discovery into podcasting and why you believe it's so powerful yeah, so for me it actually all started uh, when i did my masters and i had to do research interviews for my master thesis, which was based on the fear of failure in entrepreneurship. And I started having a lot of conversations with founders here in person, I'm based in Amsterdam. So, uh, and these conversations were very honest and raw. Um, people really shared a lot of intimate things that they were going through on an emotional level of fears that were keeping them up at night or just worries they had about certain board meetings they could never really talk to anyone about um, and that personally was very empowering for me because I worked in the corporate world before and mainly people seemed very confident and they would never show vulnerability or things that they wouldn't know and um, so I was never really exposed to these types of insecurities and through those interviews that showed me that they're actually way more human than they seem um, high achievers. And that's actually what drove me to start a podcast and bring more of that perspective to the world because I thought it was very empowering to share these struggles that entrepreneurs were going through and to just show the hard days as well because entrepreneurship is not an easy thing. And I think especially when you've never started a business before to actually make the jump and really go for it um, can be extremely hard. And I think you need a lot of motivation to really do that jump and a lot of courage. And that courage you can actually get from podcasting, from listening to those types of conversations. Um, and yeah, it was just so inspiring to me. Also the, the connection that you get from interviewing someone or from listening to someone and um, that I thought, wow, I really want to go into this market. And how I really ended up then in podcast guesting was that one of my previous guests, she wanted to get on more podcasts, but she didn't really know how. And she also didn't really have the time to do it. And I've already grown my network and had more knowledge of the industry. And then uh, we decided to work together. And that was just a lot of fun for me because I was able to grow my network and help her to get her message out there and, you know, influence other people as well. Yeah. So you brought up a point where entrepreneurs, business executives, are, a lot of times are thought of as, you know, the high achiever, very confident, no weakness. And if you show weakness, you're, you're going to have fault and people are going to exploit that weakness. Um, that's probably been a mindset in business for a lot of years. And there's this push to be in a bit more vulnerable and to show like who you are as a human. And you, you mentioned that like you were empowered to hear other people's stories of having struggles, of having doubts, of having overcome adversity. Would you say that being more vulnerable um, is actually a superpower as composed compared to just being um, uh, no weakness, high achieving, you know, there, there, there's this rigid rock of a, of a personality that just can't fault versus having a bit of empathy and a bit of 
uh, relatability to, to the people that work with you as it may be inspiring you to want to do more for that person than just seeing them being a high achiever and only focused on success. Yeah, 100%. So personally, I find it way easier to ask advice from someone who shows that they also have bad days, that they're also going through a tough period. And as well, when I have a moment where I have the feeling everything is going wrong that day, right? Then when I hear from someone else who's extremely successful um, in terms of what they built, how much money they made, how many lives they impacted, what, however you want to define success, uh, then if I hear that they also had really hard times where it seemed like nothing was working out for them, um, there's just so much relatability for me then. Um, and it just makes me want to admire them even more, actually, because of that. And someone who doesn't show that at all, it's for me so unrelatable. Um, and I also don't want to really consume their content then because it just doesn't make me feel great, right? Yeah, that, make, that makes a, a lot of sense. Now, you talked about coming onto podcast to, sh to showcase, you know, a little bit of vulnerability, but I mean, the podcast itself isn't just a place where we come on, we put on a sad face and talk about our struggles and, and pretend it, it, it's got to be authentic. It's got to be more than just that um, because people do get a chance to, to have a glimpse into your life for a longer period of time, maybe less than a minute or two most on most social media platforms but a podcast is like a 30 to minute an hour conversation so you know when when somebody's thinking you know are they just coming on podcasts to show their vulnerability side or, or should they be coming on, like what should they be thinking about with why why do i want to go on podcasts to grow my business why do i want to go share my story how well, do i choose the podcast i should be on too well, one of the things I think um, is very valuable is if you share actionable insights that helped you, just tools or personal behaviors when it comes to mindset um, that helped you along your way and that can sell, save other people time in their growth. And that's what's extremely powerful because if I hear someone talking about a situation that I can really relate to that I faced in the past or that I'm currently in. So let's take um, an easy example, for example, sales conversations, um, how you structure them, what questions you ask, for example, when you close the conversation, that can have a huge impact. And then if you hear a sales coach talking about two or three questions that really made a big difference in your conversion rate, um, and then you apply it, and then you see that there is an impact then if that happens, I'm definitely going to follow this person and I'm going to be very excited to get to know more about them because they had an impact on my life through sharing that. And I think that can be extremely powerful um, for you personally and also obviously in terms of business growth because if I see that someone is helping me through their tips, I'm going to go back and want to consume more. I, I want to find out more about them, about their life, I want to potentially check out their YouTube channel. I would be interested in purchasing a course or a book or depending on how they approach it. Um, what works really well is if they send out certain webinars with email lists. Um, I've watched webinars before of people that I followed through podcasts. And then I ended up participating in their boot camps or courses as well. So that can be extremely powerful. And then you asked me also about what podcasts they should get on. So I think that's one of the key parts about applying the strategy, because if you get that part wrong, then it's not gonna work out obviously, right? So you should be very conscious about the type of person you're targeting. Um, so for example, as well, if you're a health and wellness expert um, and then you're like one of many on the same podcast, I think the chances that you're gonna convert someone from that podcast is rather low. Whereas if you're like that different person on an entrepreneurship podcast, for example, those people probably haven't heard about health and wellness that much. So yeah, I, I think 
someone should really narrow down uh, what type of person they want to target and then think about what kind of podcast they consume. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> you wouldn't uh, be able to get away so easy if we didn't ask you these questions, but to come in on the podcast. So tell me a little bit about the steps that you were taking, some failures that you had, some struggles that you had that that you didn't get right and that you're learning from because because you talked a little bit, you know, you went from seeing that there's a value in and in telling uh, stories um, through the podcast, but you didn't just wake up the next day and voila, like it's kicking butt and taking names on the podcast. Tell, tell us a little bit about your struggles and your stories. Yeah, so one of the biggest struggles in the beginning I especially had was with the sales because I never really learned sales. Um, and then I started out and that's like a really important skill you need if you wanna run a successful business and if you wanna get in clients. So uh, one of the struggles in the beginning was that I had a lot of sales conversations, but I had quite some trouble really closing someone. So what I ended up doing was that I actually um, bartered with someone um, who was a coach uh, to give me some sales training so that I can improve. Um, and I feel like that's also extremely powerful um, when you're starting out. It's not always that you need to have a lot of money to achieve your goal, because sometimes when you're starting out, that can be quite hard. But if you just have a skill or if you can do something for someone that is interesting for them, um, that's going to get the job done as well. So that, yeah, that really helped me to get someone on board, a coach um, that helped me to, to overcome that and helped me to ask the right questions to get there. Um, and there's been many moments like that as well, especially if you're doing this alone. What, what was the piece of advice that, the, that this person shared with you that helped you close more deals? Well, actually it was about the structure of my questions that I was just going way too broad. Um, and the second part, uh, which I thought was very valuable is to ask someone two questions at the end of the conversation. And that's, first of all, how do you feel about the time investment? And second of all, how do you feel about the money investment? So that someone can't go back and think about it a lot, um, but just like openly approach these objections. So that's one of the things that I really learned is that you should immediately actually tackle those in the conversation. That's a, that's a good piece of advice. And uh, it does open that conversation. I think a lot of people, myself included, don't know how to ask and then to just not leave that ask floating out there with an, an indifference to, to a response. And, and you know, we, we don't want to convince somebody to buy something that's not going to be useful for them. But at the same time, like, if you don't ask for something, people don't do it, right? If I, if you want to be on a podcast show, you don't ask, they're not going to have you on, right? Or if you want a guest to be on your show that you've, you've always admired, like, if you don't ask them, they're not going to say yes. And so asking those questions gives you um, a, a chance for a response, but then also the answers give you a chance for feedback. So if somebody said to you like, hey, the time commitment's too much, okay. Well, maybe is it too much for them? Is it too much in general? Like, you know, maybe I need to relook at something or the price point is, is the price point not in alignment with the value I'm providing or is it not being explained properly? So I think that gives you a ton of insight to reevaluate what you're, what you're up to and what you're doing. Um, I do want to, you know, we talked a lot about uh, being a guest on a podcast, but I'm also an advocate for hosting podcasts. And I think hosting podcasts open the doors for so much opportunity people don't realize. Um, you know, sure. when we when we think about like hosting a podcast, a lot of times me, this was me, I was like, what am I going to talk about that people would care about? And the real answer is, when you start a pocket, nobody's listening to it. So it doesn't really matter so much what you're going to talk about <laughs> as long as you're thinking about what the what the end game of the podcast is and who you want to have conversations with. So if, if you're thinking about, I want to have a podcast, um, 
does it open doors for you that you wouldn't have had otherwise? And who are those people you want to have an interesting, amazing conversation? So some people, uh, like Lewis Howell School of um, Greatness, he wanted to basically have conversations with people he could learn from, the experts in the in the in the world. And I, me and you can't call the experts up in the world and say, hey, I want to talk to you for an hour about all your knowledge and learn from you. Yeah. No way. But if you say you want to come on my podcast and talk about that, sure. They're going to say, they're, they might not all say yes, but they're more likely to say yes to that than the first offering. And then two, like you can get uh, conversations going with people that are your ideal clients. So you might not have had an opportunity to talk to before. So talk, 100%. Yeah. Do you, do you um, work with, your clients and helping them create podcasts or, or like what's your conversations around with people coming in and says, Hey, you know, podcasting, what should I do? Well, I think one point that you already mentioned um, beforehand was that you really need to have a clear goal, what you want to achieve with the podcast, because I feel like, especially when I started, I thought I would just monetize the podcast via ads and that I would be probably there in a year. And I had no idea what it actually took to build up an audience, especially if you don't have any previous leverage from public appearances or TV or whatever it is. Like I still remember how Brene Brown started her podcast and you know it was suddenly everywhere just because everyone knew her already from her TED Talks and everyone was familiar with the name. So. If you're really starting from scratch, you should definitely think about different ways how to monetize the podcast, what to really get out of it. And that's why, again, like you said, um, if you just have your own strategy of who you want to get in touch with and how you maybe might uh, collaborate with them, you don't really need to have a lot of downloads to leverage this tool. And like you said, it, it opens up a lot of doors that you can get in touch with people that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. I also just recently saw John Lee Dumas just wrote a book about Gaten lessons, what he learned from business owners and what they all have in common. I think he's one of the best examples of the learnings from all of these interviews that you get. Yeah, and I think that's why he he started his podcast was he was learn he wanted to consume information and it wasn't all there. So Tammy has a question for you and she's interested in hosting a podcast based on travel, but she's not sure where to start. Can you can you give her a little bit of insight into her question on what what she should think about? Yeah, so Tammy, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what would be interesting for you? So are you thinking about a solo? episode show where you would be just talking about places that you have visited and stories what you've what you did there um, so that other people can get some recommendations from those cities or are you thinking more about a podcast where you would be interviewing people um, have you thought a little bit about what what your goal would be with the podcast because I feel like that's one of the first things where you should start to think about your mission or what you want to show the world um, so personally, to give you an example, I started my podcast, Raw and Real, because I really wanted to showcase um, these fears and struggles that entrepreneurs were experiencing, because it helped me a lot um, to get over my fear to go into entrepreneurship. And I'm sure that there are other people in the corporate world um, that really dislike their job and wake up every day with a feeling in their gut that they're not happy to go there and to really give them a push and to just change something in their life or to change their job, whatever it is for the better. So I'd say the first thing is really like, what's your why um, to start there, what you would like to achieve with that. And then you can go from there to um, research a little bit what's out there in your niche. So what kind of other travel podcasts are out there? How can you compare them? What kind of format do they have? Um, do you enjoy more solo episodes or do you like interviewing people? And, and that will like clarify a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think too is, is you want to ask some questions about the answers you want to provide your audience or your potential audience. And that could also include the guests that you want to have come on and, and answer those questions for your, for your audience. So 
I have a, a friend, she, she does, runs a blog on RV lifestyle, right? So it's basically camping and, and showing women how to uh, camp and basically go through the whole process of, of purchasing a, an RV trailer type thing and then figure out places they want to go camp. And so she kind of answers these questions that people have a lot of uh stuff that they're they're curious about like some of the things she told me about as, as like a man i might not have considered it better than a woman she'd be like well what happens if like i have to tow the trailer or these things i'm scared about or like how do i want to live in that and so because she's identified like the questions she wants to answer it makes it a little bit clearer the type of podcast you'd want to host so you know, I, the idea of traveling sounds really interesting for a podcast not so much just talking about maybe like the places you want to go visit and how cool and interesting it would be but but the people you're meeting the conversations you're having almost like that um, behind the scenes like the tourist without being a tourist type type show and then you bring on these guests that are like experts in their their niche so if like you you're going to go to Cabo San Lucas you bring on somebody that's like hey you know, these are the 10 things you could do in Cabo, but these are the 10 things you should do that nobody knows you should do that you need an insider's guide to do. And those would be compelling conversations. And I think it would open the door to a lot of stuff. So if you are actually podcasting about travel and then you have these conversations with people like you want to go, I want to go to Cabo San Lucas. So I'm going to have somebody on about Cabo San Lucas. That would open a lot of doors for a lot of uh, experiences on that vacation, you probably wouldn't have had open to you otherwise if you just went through a booking agent and took a flight and got a, got a resort. So it's just think about what the outcome might be. And then are you doing those in person? So maybe you're traveling to these places. It gives you an opportunity to go interview people in these locations and share the world. So there's so much to do. Um, back to John Lee Dumas. That's how I got started on my podcast is I bought his book, which was like 50 days to launch a podcast. And it walks you through all these questions to ask. That's, that's a good book. Um, and then, you know, I think, you know, getting on a call with Agnes would be um, fantastic uh, help and kind of getting some clarity with that. So I have a couple more questions. Um, I've invited future client, clients to my live streams to replay. I know it has helped me secure the partnerships. Why? Because my competitors do not have an organic presence online. So I do think that's, uh, there's, that's there's an some, excellent point. Yeah. And then uh, Tammy brought up, um, she likes the idea of showcasing the experts from the industry, sharing their side. I just, it's just my business full time in January. So a little bit of answers. So, and then also, thank you. You're wonderful for your answers. Um, thank you. <laughs> so I do want to, before we kind of wrap up, I want to ask you, Agnes, what is next for you? Where do you, where do you see yourself taking your raw and real podcast in the next year to the next five years? Well, so honestly, I'm mainly obviously focused on getting people out there and helping them to have impact. So I'm very passionate about working entrepreneurs or coaches that are very um, enthusiastic about their business and they know that they will have great impact if they share the message, right? And really standing behind them and making sure they get to the right podcasts and they have a lot of fun and they really develop during that process. But when it comes to my personal podcast is it's just continuing the mission that I started from the beginning. And that is really to get la people like you on Nate um, that are willing to share the struggles and their failures along the way and just what they learned from it. And I also just loved what you shared about starting your own podcast and getting over your fears of being an introvert and then showcasing um, yeah, what you're going through. I think that's extremely powerful because you grow through it personally and that spills over into other areas of your life, the confidence you get from that. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to ask you the question I ask all my guests, but what does it mean to you to be all in? Uh, that means for me to keep going, uh, like no matter what's going on in my business and to reach out to other people and um, no matter how uncomfortable that might be and get help um, and to figure out a solution to get that help. And that's already something that I mentioned beforehand, that it's not always about 
having a lot of money um, to get actually the solution that you need because there's so much in between that um, that you can offer someone knowledge wise help wise to yeah to get their help and nate i'm sure you can relate to that you're a very busy guy so i bet if someone would like to have some advice on their linkedin and then they could for example help you out editing some episodes and creating some content for you i'm sure you'd be interested in that absolutely i think i think helping each other out is a great way to go and when when i started my podcast I, I had to set like a, a number of episodes I was going to do. I said 50 or hundred, I was going to do a hundred before I quit. And, and the reason I did this is because I knew that there was going to be challenges that came up along the way. And I didn't want to quit because of them. I decided that I wanted to make sure that if I decided the podcasting wasn't for me, it was because I chose not to do it, not because it got hard and difficult. And if I hadn't made that um, decision, I probably would have quit early because the things I thought were going to be easy were hard. And that was um, recording, um, having technical issues. Like I recorded my first podcast with the mute button on. So like I had to completely redo it. So like stuff like that happened. And if I had just been like willing to uh, call it quits and let somebody else podcasting for somebody else. I would have missed the opportunity to do it uh, and meet and connect with so many people. And after I think you get started, a lot of times we're like, we're like, well, how am I going to figure it out? Like, how am I going to take a podcast from zero episodes to have an audience and a bunch of cool guests and all this stuff that's going on? And the reality is the podcast world is super small and everybody's super friendly and super yes. helpful. So all you have to do is kind of like, get connected to like two people like basically like if you came on my show or agnes show and said this is my first time podcasting after the show I just, i've never podcast before i've never been on a podcast before like how do i do more of this it's like i'm going to introduce you to two people that can help you they might be two people that i think you'd be a good fit on there might be somebody that can help you get on shows it might be just people that do podcasting and like get in their facebook community and ask a bunch of questions and all of a sudden doors start opening for you you learn a ton and it's it becomes the part you think is going to be hard becomes super easy. And it's just becomes, I get to spend an hour, 30 minutes, whatever, with somebody and have a really, really cool conversation. Right. And then the, the stuff that you're probably not going to get real jazzed about is the back end stuff. And, and then that, that can be outsourced, right? You can work with people to trade uh, services if you don't have the money to do it, or you can learn how to do it pretty cheaply through through YouTube and stuff like that and do what it takes to get it going. But yeah, I, I think don't let getting it figured out stop you because whatever you're whatever you think is going to happen won't or whatever you think might not happen will and just just be along for the ride. It's gonna open up a lot of doors for you. So awesome answer there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the people you work with you have a business um you have uh, you know you coach people to to be on other podcast shows so so who are the people that are ideally your favorite people to work with and how you help them yeah so there are two types of people that i work with um on the one hand those are coaches and entrepreneurs that are really new to the space so like you already mentioned um they're really dipping their toes pretty much into the podcasting world and and they haven't done any any public speaking really uh, beforehand, which means that they have a lot of troubles on their messaging. They're often not sure what they want to talk about. Partly there are some like fear barriers to really overcome that. So first we really work on their messaging and work on their pitch and a little bit on their story and make sure that they're very confident when they have the first appearance. Um, and then I work with them over an, uh, three months or four months. Uh, to get them booked on a couple of podcasts so they can really gain more confidence, start building up their network. So that's the first type of person. And the second type of person um, is already someone that's like, let's say four years in business, um, at least they are already a confident speaker and they just really want to go to the next level and they want to utilize those appearances as much as possible. And then I work together with them over a period of six months. So they get booked on really a lot of shows and I also create the content for them. Um, so they get a lot of content out of it and they can really track and utilize those appearances um, to make sure they get the result that they want. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think 
um, something you didn't mention is, is these podcasts, they last forever, right? They're long form. They exist in lots of locations. So even if they don't result in um, immediate business development, you're, you're typically linked back to your website. So you're going to have some SEO. It's going to exist for a long time. So when people search the show, you show up. When people search you, you show up. And then when you're showing up regularly and consistently, it, it adds a little bit of credibility to who you are. So if somebody wanted to um, offer you a chance to uh, be a guest speaker on something or, or paid public speaking, like you're going to turn up and, and they're going to know like how you carry yourself, what you talk about. And so it just opens a lot more doors. So I think the podcasting just has a lot of unlimited potential of the short and long term benefits of, of networking, getting introduced to the people you want to get connected with. So awesome stuff, Agnes, where can people go if they want to get connected and work with you? Yeah, just shoot me a message on LinkedIn. I post a lot of tips on how to get on podcasts, how to improve, um, you know, everything about podcasting, just connect with me on LinkedIn and then you'll be able to, um, to interact with me. Awesome stuff. So that's all linked here in the show notes. I encourage everybody to reach out to Agnes, say hello. And if you do have a conversation with her, let her know you heard about her on the all in podcast with Nate Peo. So thanks for coming on and being raw and real. Thanks, Agnes. Thanks so much.